as we view a modern picture of the area, let us back up our story to central medieval England in Yorkshire, in an area presently known as Sheffield, where five small streams tumble out of the hills to form the river Sheaf. The feudal system was in place in those long ago days, and the common man lived a life far different than our current comfortable existence. The stories of Charles Dickens give us a glimpse of the times. Life for most was short, hunger was frequent, arduous daily toil was required, shelter was primitive, sanitary conditions non-existent, and half the children died before their fourth or fifth birthday. For hundreds of years, the population of the British Isles did not increase. But changes were coming. The feudal system was overturned. Property rights became available to the common man. Settlements appeared along the river Sheaf. It turns out that the area was blessed with natural resources. There was iron ore, valuable in the Iron Age, an era which had dawned long before the birth of Christ. But the area later to be called Sheffield also had coal, abundant water power from f the five streams dropping from the hills, and importantly, sandstone well suited to make grindstones. Soon these resources were employed to make cutting instruments, knives, swords, scythes, sickles, and the like. By the 1400s, Sheffield was gaining notoriety for its cutlery. The name of the city or district is associated even today, 600 years later, with the finest of cutting tools. The craftsmen there developed skill, not only in making cutlery, but in smelting, forging, and tempering iron and steel. And these are important factors in the developing story of the Horner clan. As what is called the Industrial Revolution took hold, there arose a great need for ironworking tools. The printing press, the steam engine, wagons with iron wheels and axles, and other machines required the ability to shape iron and steel to very specific forms. Who better qualified to make the necessary tools to do that than the artisans who had learned to fashion tempered steel tools with cutting edges. Precision machines are still in the future, as are interchangeable parts. Machines are assembled, not on assembly lines, but by skilled workmen at individual benches. The parts of these machines are hand-fitted together. Making that final fit requires a file. And who better to fashion a file than those craftsmen located in the heart of Yorkshire at the settlements of Sheffield? And more and more of these files are needed. And at that point, we begin to connect the history I have just laid out and the Horner clan I wish to tell you about. Our connection will begin about 200 years ago. I discovered there are other people researching the same people I am. In June 2012, I make contact with John Hoff of Tracy, California. We soon discover that Alfred, who I knew as a child, is a great-grandfather to both of us. And later in our story, we will pursue that relationship. We also discover that our respective family trees show Richard married to different women. I have him married to Harriet, who I think is a Wainwright. He and other searchers have him first marrying Elizabeth Pattison. Since Harriet is Richard's wife in 1880, if Hoff is correct, Richard was widowed or divorced from Elizabeth and subsequently wedded Harriet. 
And after a few days batting this one around, John Hoff, who has better access to English records, finds that he was on the wrong Richard. There were, and are, quite a few Richard Horners, not only in England, but in the U.S. The issue is decided when Hoff finds a record, the October 1850 marriage of Richard and Harriet Wainwright, born in 1832. The groom is 22, the bride 18. That information is later confirmed by recently discovered written family records. Our Richard did not marry, marry Elizabeth, only Harriet, and they were separated only upon Richard's death in 1891. My version is correct, he mends his, but he does have other information that I gladly add to what I know. After determining that Harriet Wainwright was indeed the only wife of Richard and the mother of great-grandfather Alfred, I turned my attention <coughs> excuse me, I turned my attention to John F. Horner. You will recall that in 1880 they lived next door to each other and both were file cutters and I suspect they are brothers. If Richard was a common name in Old England, and it was, John was more so in spades. But soon I was able to pick up clues and can now say with great confidence that, yes, Richard and John Horner were brothers. The first hard evidence is the city directory of Columbus, Ohio, in 1864. The brothers are listed in alphabetical order and both are file cutters. For me that pretty much settles it. Later evidence confirms it. Let's summarize some of the things we know about the Horners in our lineage. In the long, long ago in medieval England, when surnames first came into use, they were often based on occupations like carpenter, baker, miller, weaver, etc. There was an ancestor who made his living working with the horns of sheep and cattle. From them, by various devices, he fashioned parts of those horns into spoons and ladles, combs, and other useful items that are made of plastic these days. Anyway, that long ago gentleman, about whom we will unfortunately never know, came to be known by his given name, followed by one of the surnames coming into use. And this one acquired the surname of Horner. Probably dozens of other men following the same trade of working with animal horns in merry old England assume the identical surname or something similar. Horner became a very common name in England. A search on the web and you will learn that almost 5,000 Horners live today in Yorkshire. When you heard it in that era, you had a pretty good idea of what occupation the family had followed at some time in the past. Now jump ahead a millennium or two, let us say to the mid-1900s in Racine, Wisconsin. If you talk to someone who knows the Horners, he is likely to tell you they are vegetable farmers. Even today, 28 years after the last of the Horners quit farming, our daughter-in-law Shelley says she is still asked if she is related to the farming Horners. And we were farmers for 75 years and three generations. My grandfather Howard took up the business, my father and uncles continued, and I, Dick, followed it for 34 of those years. And as long as we're jumping around with our time machine, let's go back almost 200 years to the early and mid-1800s and look up a man by the name of Richard Alfred Horner. 
The Richard of the 1800s and his family were not farmers. They were known by a different trade, and that trade was file cutting. The file referred to here has nothing to do with computer files or the way you organize your papers. We are talking about plain old metal files, the kind made of steel with teeth cut into it. It is flat or round, fine or coarse, and the end toward you is tapered to a point called a tang. Yep, it is the tool you reach for to sharpen your knife or axe or file something down to fit.